The Japanese war machine was moving swiftly forward, conquering Guam, Hong Kong, Wake Island, Malaya, and Singapore. Faced with a high casualty rate and the inability to break the use of air defense in Bataan, General Homa decided to pull back and await reinforcements. There now ensued a lull in the fighting that would last 45 days. Unable to win with their guns, the Japanese resorted to propaganda to break the spirit of the Filipinos and turn them against the Americans. They dropped leaflets about, uh, about uh, women, so forth making us think of our families. They thought of this as uh, entertainment. But the morale of the Bataan defenders remained high. The defenders were motivated to fight harder when they learned the story of Erlinda, a young Filipina who had been raped and killed by the Japanese. Remember Erlinda became the cry of defiance. Yusuf Air Headquarters tried to boost morale further through steering broadcasts from the Voice of Freedom in Corregidor. Lieutenant Norman Reyes, sa English portion, Tagalog portion naman, si, uh, then Lieutenant Francisco Isidoro, talagang mataas ang moral namin. Lalo nung marinig namin na a mile-long convoy is on the way. The propaganda then was that President Roosevelt is sending a long convoy of reinforcements. Uh, so just keep on holding, Bataan. Keep on holding. But there was no convoy coming. Little did the Filipino-American soldiers know that the United States government had reached a decision that virtually made them sacrificial pawns. After Pearl Harbor, the U.S. would pour its remaining resources to helping the Allies win the war in Europe first, before making its move in the Pacific. To make matters worse, food and medicine were in short supply. We were eating iguana, we were eating snakes, and I must tell you that uh, once we got back into Bataan, the Philippine scouts did not need their horses anymore. And we started to eat horses. Lugaw. And then later on, some kamote with Lugaw. And then later on, Kangkong with Lugaw. 50% casualties. And the Philippine Army was just sitting in their foxhole with malaria. We had to put up a cemetery nearby. We buried them ourselves.